Hey folks, welcome back to the Tiny Fibre Studio. I'm Bex and I thought that in this video I would take you on a little excursion that I took recently. The Association of Guilds of Weavers, Spinners and Dyers is the umbrella organisation for all of the guilds in the UK. Their summer school is a biennial week-long fibre arts education event and it alternates with the national exhibition. Even numbered years are exhibitions, odd number years are summer schools. At the end of the week of teaching, they hold a summer school open day where there's a trade show and each of the classrooms are opened up so that external visitors can come and see what the participants have been doing all week. Although I couldn't go to the actual summer school, I figured I could at least go and visit for the day. And then I got an invitation to try out some unusual wheels. And if you've watched this channel for a while, you know I'm a sucker for a quirky wheel, so I definitely couldn't miss that. Summer school is held in different locations around the UK, often at agricultural colleges. This time it was at Harper Adams University in Shropshire. Not the easiest of journeys from Devon without a car, so my trip involved a 1am start and three different forms of transport. But, you know, I made it. The open day started at 9am and I had some time to kind of browse around the trade show and chat to a few folks before the classrooms opened up at 12.30. I totally forgot to take photos at the trade show, sorry about that, apart from the new Magicraft Luna. Still not sure how I feel about that one? Let me know what you think in the comments. Although the show was obviously a lot smaller than some others that you might be used to, they had around 25 vendors who provided a really good mixture of fibre, yarn, equipment, books, dye ingredients and some finished items for weavers, spinners and dyers. I had a couple of really niche bits of equipment on my list, but I ended up just coming away with this gorgeous braid of BFL from Debbie of Dilution. One of the reasons that I wanted to go to the open day in the first place was to see the entries for the Certificate of Achievement, which is the association's equivalent of the Olds College Master Spinner and Master Weaver certificates. I'm going to say that Master Spinner sounds way cooler. The Certificate of Achievement has a separate syllabus for each of the five disciplines. Spinning, weaving, tapestry weaving, natural dyeing and synthetic dyeing. The candidates work through the syllabus, creating preliminary work, samples and a project piece, documenting their progress and evaluating what they've produced along the way. And then the assessments take place either at the exhibition or the summer school each year and the candidates present their portfolio of work anonymously. I've seen photos online and in issues of the Association's magazine, the journal, but this is something that I've been wanting to see in person for quite a while now. This year there were just two submissions, one for spinning and one for natural dyeing. If you're interested in the full content of the syllabus, I'll leave links in the description, but I'll give you a rough idea here of what's required. For the spinning certificate, the candidate has to present nine 100 metre skeins from four different types of wool from raw fleece. Short wool, lost along wool, mountain or hill breed, and then one other breed or crossbreed. They also have to spin cotton, lime flax, silk and two other fibres, all with supporting preliminary work and a swatch of each yarn using an appropriate technique. They must also present six skeins at least 10 metres in length of fancy yarns like slub and boucle and so on. And then they have to design a project piece and document their entire design process. Sincere apologies, I thought I had a photo of the finished project piece um, for spinning. I couldn't find it when I got home. So I'm very sorry about that, but I really enjoyed flipping through all of the files and seeing how their ideas had developed as they'd worked with the fibre. I had a chance to chat to the spinner later in the day and congratulated them on their achievements and they were delighted with their credit grade as well they should be. It was a lot of work that had gone into that. For the natural dyeing certificate, candidates have to show the use of natural dyes on wool, cotton, silk and at least two other fibres on both yarn and fabric. Some samples need to show decorative use of dyes like space dyeing, dip dyeing or resist techniques. They must produce a wide range of well-documented samples with detailed notes about the type of dye they used, the quantities and the decision behind using them. 
and there are lists of specific dyes that they must include and everything must be tested for light and wash fastness. They also need to produce a project piece along with the notes on the design and development of that piece. As with the other disciplines, there can be more than one project piece as long as they form a set. This was an incredible amount of work, which was apparently done over the course of around five or six years and thoroughly deserved its distinction grade. The project pieces were four waffle weave scarves in colours inspired by the seasons. The whole thing was just stunning. <laughs> massive, massive congratulations to the dyer. I'm not sure if seeing the entries in person was inspiring or just really intimidating, but if you remember that these were done over the course of two or more years, it definitely seems a little bit more achievable. The organiser of the certificates did a talk in the afternoon, which I really wanted to go to, but I was too busy running around the campus trying to see everything before my return taxi showed up. Harper Adams is quite a sprawling campus and everyone helps each other out with trying to find different classes. I didn't take photos in every class and I still managed to miss Margot Selby's classroom, which I'm gutted about, but I'll show a few selected highlights. When it comes to weaving, I'm particularly attracted to twills and double weave. So I stopped by Callie Booker's classroom and saw some really lovely block double weave examples. But this double weave twill stopped me in my tracks. I suspect it was one of Callie's own samples because I recognise some of the others in this area. And also this was done on 16 shafts and I think most people were on eight in that classroom. There were also classes on 3D ply splitting flax spinning. I really loved seeing all the woven samples in that class. Botanical printing, paper making, soft basketry and many many more. I just really wish that I'd had more time to take it all in. Now about those quirky wheels that I mentioned earlier, my friend Amanda Hannaford was teaching a class called A Spindle A Day. And when I mentioned that I was coming up for the open day, she told me that I needed to go and have a play on some of her spindle wheels. Spindle wheels are not particularly common in the UK, but we do have an enormous great wheel at my guild. Great wheels are variously known as big wheels, long wheels, muckle wheels, walking wheels, and many other names throughout the world. The one at our guild is so big that only one member has room to store it and it doesn't fit in their car, so another member has to go and pick it up and transport it. It gets brought to guild once every few months and I really enjoy brushing up my skills on it, but I knew that Amanda had acquired some other spindle wheels which were built by Peter Thiel based on American designs, the pendulum and trolley wheels. I'd heard a lot about these beasts but I'd never had the chance to try them. Now. Heads up, I am far from being a spinning historian, but the gist of it is that these were designed in America as improvements to the walking wheel. Because winding the yarn onto a spindle-driven wheel involves stopping, turning the wheel in the opposite direction to unwind a bit, then moving the yarn back in line with the back half of the spindle and turning the wheel again to wind on, the longer the length of yarn you can produce in one go, the more efficient the spinner can be. So the idea behind the pendulum wheel was that the spinner could just sit still and the pendulum arm moved the spindle away from them as they pressed a treadle. The pendulum wheel seems to have debuted in the US around the 1860s, by which time the Industrial Revolution in Britain had taken over the majority of commercial textile production over here. And although people still spun on great wheels at home for some time after that point, I'm not aware of any attempts to improve great wheels in the UK and these pendulums specifically are really quite rare over here. I'm only aware of three in the whole country and two of those are directly modelled after the American wheels and one is an American one that was imported. Apart from anything else, a lot of people in the UK don't have enormous houses and so when something is no longer necessary and it takes up a lot of space, it's gonna be the first thing on the chopping block in terms of getting removed from the house. My first attempt on the pendulum wheel was actually surprisingly decent to the point where I heard someone in the class commenting, well, that's not a novice spinner. So clearly it looked okay, but of course I wasn't filming that and it went rapidly downhill from that first attempt. <laughs> 
In my defence, um, number one, it's been a while since I've spun cotton, which is what we were using on there. I also normally draft right-handed, so switching to left-hand drafting always takes a bit of practice each time. And in total, I'd probably spent about 15 minutes with it by this point. On reflection, I think my body was reverting back to the muscle memory of how fast I can go on a great wheel, but it also had to get used to the treadle mechanism and the shorter staple fibre, which wasn't allowing me to draft back as quickly as I normally would, so I should have slowed down a bit. I would love to get a really proper fluid action going on with these, or indeed any great wheel, but I just don't have the space to have one or to practice. Due to the space in the room, it was also difficult to set up a tripod at a good angle without it being a trip hazard. So the footage that I have is a mixture of myself and other people demonstrating the wheels, and we were all very new to it with not a lot of practice. So if you want to watch a video of someone spinning on a pendulum wheel after a good amount of practice and looking like they know what they're doing, I've linked a couple of videos in the description. The other unusual wheel was a trolley wheel, which is based on the same principle. The spindle is mounted to a little trolley which runs up and down a fixed track. Again, you add twist pretty much as you would with a great wheel, and you move the trolley along using a treadle. This treadle is far longer and a lot harder to press, so I definitely need to do some leg days before I try with that one again. The winding action is really fun though. So that was my very quick visit to the summer school. Here's hoping that I'll be able to attend for the whole week next time. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next one.